All right, hello everybody and welcome to another video. As most of you hopefully will know, I'm a landscape photographer and I use Lightroom primarily to process my images, but here's the thing you need to know about me. I am a lazy photographer, I'm stuck in my ways, I do not like change and I lack trust in modern technology. I think every update is only there to spy on me and to sell my data, but I had to change. I finally updated Lightroom and then I updated it again and now I'm making this video because, man, it's incredible. So I'm so bad that a few months ago, I did a paid job for Adobe <laughs> where I went through my editing process in Lightroom and the version of Lightroom that I was using in that live presentation for Adobe was well out of date, years out of date. That's how much I don't like change. But a couple of months ago, I updated Lightroom to, ah oh man, what's the version? Hang on. 11.3 is what I updated to. And then I updated again to the very latest version, which is 11.4. And I'm gonna show you some of the things that I now use in Lightroom that have improved my photography, my processing and my workflow massively. And have actually got me even more excited about my images and wanting to process them. So let me start off by showing you some cool things that I've learned in Lightroom. If you don't already know this, you might get some value. So the first thing we're gonna look at in Lightroom is presets. Now, I am not the biggest preset fan. I very rarely use them, but that might change now with this new addition to Lightroom. So if you go down to the left-hand side of the uh, panel, click on presets, scroll down, you're gonna see adaptive sky. Now, if you click on that and then hover over these presets, you will see that it's only applying them to the sky. By the way, this is an unprocessed RAW file, which I shot last summer. Um, and you've got all these various different presets, you know, storm clouds, neon tropics, sunrise and sunset. Sunset looks terrible. Don't know why that's any different to sunrise. But if we go on sunrise, that looks quite nice, quite dreamy, nice soft colors. So we're going to click on that and it's going to apply a preset to the sky only. And what's happened is Lightroom has created a mask and we can see that mask up here in the right hand side. Now, how do I make this bigger? I want to make this bigger. There we go. Now, what's cool about this is if you're new to Lightroom, you're new to landscape photography and new to processing, you might see effects on images and you're not quite sure how they're done or why an image looks good to you in a particular way. Well, what we can do is we can see what exactly has happened here. And all that's happened is if we click on the mask, we can see that the temperature has been increased. The clarity has been reduced, giving a nice soft ethereal look and saturation has gone up by a little bit as well. Um, so that's it. So we can actually learn something by looking at these presets. And now we know what makes a nice sky. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. You can go in and change it, pull down the exposure a little bit, you know, whatever. So that's pretty cool. So that's the first thing is, you know, time saving and a bit of learning with adaptive sky presets. So now that we're happy with the sky, we can go on and do the exact same thing, but this time for the tree by using adaptive subject preset. Um, so same thing, we've got various different presets and if you look closely, it's only applying it to the tree. So let's click, uh, let's click warm pop, seems to work quite well. And what's happened is if we go up here to our mask panel, it's created a mask on the tree and it's applied, what's it done? It's applied a bit of warming, a little bit of texture, and a bit of clarity. Pretty much what I would do to the tree. And that is a fast, easy way of processing your images. So that is presets that use masks, masking for sky and masking for subject, but use them at your own discretion. I don't like to become too dependent on them and much prefer the manual control of creating masks myself. So I've got an image here. It's an image of two halves, the sky and the mountain, but the mountain is also an image of two halves with light and shadow. So I'm just gonna edit this image very quick and simple using only masks to be precise two masks. So let's go over here to our mask tool, click that and we want to again select sky. It's created a mask for the sky but the problem with this is it's not a very soft transition from the mountain top through to the sky. So if I go ahead and I don't know reduce exposure and bump up my clarity you know just for demonstration purposes you can see there's this really unnatural harsh line. It's kind of, it's not really done a great job at all if I'm being honest. So we'll reset these values and I'll show you a better way of doing it. So we've still got our mask here 
on the sky, but this time we're going to come over, click these three dots on our mask, and we're going to intersect mask with any of these tools. So what we can do is you can use the mask which is currently on the sky and then we can use the tools on top of that mask such as a brush or a graduated filter. So I'm going to go for the linear gradient which is a graduated filter and I'm going to pull that down. Now when I make some changes such as exposure and clarity, we'll just go all the way up just for demonstration purposes, you can see that it doesn't, the, the graduated filter still doesn't affect the mountains in the foreground, but we can get that much softer transition and it looks far more natural. Obviously we've you know, cranked it up quite high, it's never actually gonna look natural. So let's pull these back a little bit. So yeah, down with the exposure, uh, lift the whites, a bit, a bit of clarity, you know, there we go. We'll say for argument's sake that that is the sky done. So that's one mask done. So we're gonna create a new mask this time for the foreground, but there is no select foreground option. So we're gonna select sky again. I'm gonna click on the three dots here and we're gonna invert mask two. Now we have a mask that's inverted, which is only gonna affect the mountains, but we have the same problem that we had before with this harsh transition from the mountains to the sky. So exactly the same as before, three dots intersect mask with, only this time I'm gonna go for a brush. Now this bottom half of the image here is all about highlights and shadows. So I'm going to start painting on my brush, just here, start at the bottom, and then we can uh, bring down our blacks, there we go, go quite far for demonstration purposes and lift our whites. Now we're really emphasizing those highlights and shadows. And as I get closer to the top of the mountain, I'm actually gonna bring the flow of my brush down. The flow, um, imagine you've got a pen with ink in it and the ink's flowing out of the pen onto your paper. Well, if it's at 100%, you get 100% of the ink onto your paper. And if it's at 50%, you have to go over a line twice to get the same amount of the ink effectively. So I'm actually going to bring this down to about 25% and then I can slowly just start painting over the mountains here and really get those highlights and those shadows. So there we go and it's just a much softer transition. Of course I'm doing this very quickly and without much care and attention for demonstration purposes. So yeah, these masks, these I don't, they're, not, they're not even new but they're relatively new to me. Uh, they're a very powerful tool um, and they're a great addition to Lightroom. So this next thing I'm going to show you is incredibly powerful and is well worth a look, but it's not a Lightroom feature per se, it's actually a plugin and it's a paid plugin. Now I downloaded the free trial version because I wanted to see it for myself and see if it makes a difference worthy enough for me to pay for it. Now I got this tip from Julian Baird who made a whole video about this plugin. So if you want more information about the plugin I'm about to show you, go and watch Julian's video. It goes into an immense amount of detail, but I'm excited to use it and I'll show you exactly what it does on this image here. Now this is a photograph of mine taken in Scotland. I love this image. This here is my processed file, the processed raw image. And I love all of the details of these birch trees catching the early morning sunlight. But I want more, right? I want more detail, I want more clarity, I want it to be a bit sharper. So there is a plugin, it's called DXO Pure Raw 2. And like I say, I've just got the free trial and I'm gonna show you exactly what it can do. So I've got a duplicate copy here. This is a, an unedited, so this is the unedited raw file just here. And what I'm gonna do is I am gonna select this image and I'm going to go to File, Plugin Extras, Process with DxO Pure Raw 2. So this window pops up and it gives me a few options for raw processing. I'm going to choose Deep Prime and I want the format of the file to be DNG, which is a, a raw file so that I can go ahead and process the image. So what this plugin is doing is it's creating me a new raw file, but it's creating me a better raw file. Apparently, we'll see. I'll show you the difference. 
So I mentioned that I wanted more detail in the image and these trees to stand out more. Well, let me show you this. The image on the right is my original raw edit. The image on the left, still my edit, but on the DxO raw file, which was created. Now let's look at my version here and let's look at these birch trees. You know, they look pretty cool. They're standing out, they're not too bad, but I wish they were sharper. Let's click on this DxO version. And I don't know if this comes across on this YouTube video, I hope it does, but the level of detail on this file is incredible. Now, I've never been a big fan of AI, and I often find that a lot of these tools that claim to enhance your images actually do more harm than good. But I have to say, on the few tests that I've done with this plugin, it's looking great. I mean, the image on the left, so much sharper, so much more detail. And those birch trees, man, they really stand out. So with Lightroom, it's not all new tools and tricks that I'm using. <laughs> I'm actually, yeah, I'm learning some new skills, some new tools that have been there a long time. For example, I shoot a lot of panoramic photography. And with a pano, the horizon has to be straight. But with some images, it's difficult to judge where, you know, if the horizon is straight. And what I usually do is I'll click on the crop tool and I'll try and line everything up and it's not quite working. Well, <laughs> I've only just, I, I know, I'm, I'm a lazy photographer. What can I say? But you click on the straighten tool here, you can click point A and drag across a line which matches perfectly my horizon and then bosh, the image is straight. I know it's a little thing and I'm sure that most of you do it, but some of you might not. There you go. That's how you get a perfectly straight horizon. I should edit that out. I'm just making myself look like a loser. Okay, joking aside, it's time for some serious talk um, in the way of a plug, a book plug, book plug. And uh, this is my book, Landscape Photography on Location. It's just blank pages, apparently. Images and stories from within the field. And there's like uh, oh, about a hundred and odd, hundred and odd pages, all kinds of images, all kinds of good stuff. So if you've found, you know, if you enjoy landscape photography and you want a bit of inspiration and, you know, some anecdotes from the field and a few shooting tips, there is a link to my website below. There we go. Thank you very much. And I will see you all next week.